I trust it. I feel today I almost come this close to hearing it because this is the biggest conference I'm to sit up here and trust myself that this came true. And yep. I suppose part of me needs a validation that it is true. <laughs> um, well, you'll get that either way. Right? I know. That's <laughs> fine. But it was also because uh, some of it, I won't do it all because some of it's very heady and I know it's my stuff, but. I, I just well, actually, there. actually, I'd like you to do it all. Okay. Is that all right? How, sure. long, how oh, yeah, long is sure. it in this case? I, I, I can speak quickly. <laughs> no, 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 But it was just because the part that came through that was emotional. Yeah, I think you'll feel it differently. The soul of the one you know, uh, you now know as Mary, is one of the fairest souls that the universe has ever known. She has moved with grace through the different spirit, uh, spheres of existence with such love and kindness for others that it comes as no surprise to you that she undertook work in the field of helping assisting others in her work prior to, uh, prior to meeting AJ. She has suffered much grief in her previous life and moves with great ease in allowing herself to remember that which has caused so, uh, such pain in her previous life with you all on earth. Much is unknown to you about her at this time and I am happy to share with you some of the aspects of her soul that may deeply enlighten you and inspire you to continue on this path with the relish and commitment that you have already displayed. Mary was born into a family where the given laws at the time were very much in favour of men, and so she grew up with many wounds and injuries that were inherent from her family line that deemed that women were to be treated in such a way. As a child, she found it most unjust that those around who were offered, who offered such unending love and support to the men who surrounded her were treated with such unfairness and injustice. She was often reprimanded and severely punished by those who were not of the same understanding for expressing her views and emotions about the treatment of women. At a very early age, unbeknownst to her, she calibrated thoughts of manifestation in this regard. She lived with men who consistently punished or tor tortured, I wasn't sure, uh, her phys physically and emotionally, and the utmost shame was then bestowed upon her when, at the age of 13, she was brutally raped by a member of her, I, the feeling was her extended family, or mm -hmm. friends of family, and was left to experience what can be the greatest of all feminine expressions, birthing and motherhood alone. This has been one of her heaviest grievance, grievances for when she bore the son and daughter of Yeshua, and I got a feeling that maybe there was a miscarriage or something, or she, there was a loss with the son. Um, her law of attraction once again shows that her fear of being alone and abandoned in motherhood was a profound one. It is an emotion that she works through progressively and with such, such depth that in a way she release releases not to make much pain for those women around her as I have directly experienced, which I did. Thanks to me. Mary's greatest desire is to be of service to others, especially children. She has an unending source of love and compassion and a love that reaches so deeply for all other human souls, not just those whom she touches directly. She holds a huge feeling of res resentment to those who willingly cause injustices to others which she will no doubt truly experience in release in time, for this resentment serves only her fears and supports not her authentic love for others. Mary has much clearing to do around the issues of trust, not just with Yeshua, but with all men in general. She finds it most difficult to be vulnerable and open with them for fear of being deeply hurt once more. Fears of abandonment and rejection are deeply ingrained in her heart from a very early age. In her first existence on earth, her father left her family on a regular basis to work or trade or just I'm going in other areas, and so she has a deep longing for security emotionally with the men in her life, not so much in a material sense, but rather the certainty of them loving her unconditionally and unwaveringly. This is the bit I really want to get to. Um, there is much more for you all to discover about Mary, which you will in time, but it is her guidance in reclaiming the true feminine essence which will transform the earth and those who wish to hear her words and experience her love. For in her first existence, she was demeaned, humiliated, degraded, and dishonored in so many ways by those around her. It is through this existence that she will now be able to show every woman who is ready to receive this information that change and transformation of a magnitude never seen on earth before can and will take place for women everywhere. And this will take place with a grace, softness, and ease unlike any other time in history where women stood their ground in a, uh, in a way of anger, defiance, and rage. Mary's way of teaching seems so effortless that many will be amazed at the sheer simplicity and gentleness of her teachings. 
This will allow her to touch even the most closed of hearts. It is part of her soul condition to truly discover who she is as a woman of God, the divine feminine. She would seek only to destroy the myth that women are secondary in nature to men, revealing to the world that not only are we all equal, but that women have truly the leading role in re-establishing the balance on earth at this time. One of her greatest soul passions and desires is to have many children with Yeshua, and something that she struggles with enormously in this existence is her fear of losing him again. Until she has fully released these emotional scars, conception and birth may physically be a challenging thing for her, as her fear is so great that it can only prevent these events from happening easily and lovingly. She has more grieving to do with regard to this topic. Know this, that attracting Mary into your life will possibly be one of the most profound things to ever happen in your life, as already you know. Do not underestimate the power of her love for humanity, and allow yourself to be inspired and guided by her in every way. Open your heart to her compassion, and allow it to melt the coolness within. Allow her warmth to touch your very soul and the soul of humanity. For this existence is her time. Yeshua knows that it is her time to shine and much will be done by him in this respect to guide and support her in her endeavours to do so. Mary is the most important woman on earth at this time as she has the capacity to change everything for women all over the earth. This bears for her a huge burden of fear and responsibility, but in time she will realize that she has attracted women who feel as deeply as she does, and she will realize that she is deeply loved and respected by those women who surround her now. She is so deeply loved in the spirit world also, and is often referred to as mother, for she has guided so many to higher levels of being in the light. She is everything you could possibly imagine as God in human form when it comes to depths of love and compassion for others. It is important to support this blessed woman, for her energy levels can easily be depleted from giving so much to others, and in time she will understand that to receive is as blessed a gift as it is as is giving. We all love our sister Mary more than words could ever express, and we are so overjoyed that she is on earth, returned again in harmony with her brother Jesus. We are so excited for humanity at this time. You are in the most perfect of company, for you desired it to be so. May the love of God fill you all. So long for now. I bid you farewell, David. That's my name. Well, um, <laughs> that is a very accurate message. Uh, not only about Mary's feelings now, um, not only about the future as well as to what many of you will experience with Mary, but but also very much about some of the events in her first century life as well. Right. So, so you can be very happy that, that you obviously have a very clear connection with, with your celestial spirit guide okay. to, to, to channel a message like that. Okay. Yeah. So you need to be able to trust that yeah. and allow yourself to... Yeah, I, I really worked through that last night. Yeah, it, it that's just... it set off and yeah, I think I came there. And Mary's going to need a copy of that. Yeah, that and ironically when I went to print this off, the paper jammed and yeah. I oh, and, yeah. and the woman said, oh you're not obviously meant to print, I thought, fuck it, I, and I went, let, I said, just let me feel this, yeah. and literally a second later it came through and I yeah. thought, nice one, it was worth all the crap of the last Awesome, piece. so, so uh, before you go, Peter's got a photocopy here. Sure, well she can have this one and I'll print it off oh, my computer. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you so much for the She's supposed to be about mediumship and not about her. <laughs> and it is about mediumship, and, but, but um, obviously 
you can see that the clarity of messages will very much depend upon the connection you have with your guides and the openness of your emotional condition, right? And so, if I, the reason why I wanted to have Mary come up, if she's still okay with that, is, uh, is to explain to you some of the emotions she went through just after or just around the group time that we had last time you met her, and the emotions she had just before the group this time, so that you can actually feel some of the things that have been said and, and work out whether they, you know, for yourself, any channeling that you've done has been true or not. So it is about me, but it's going to trigger you emotionally too. You knew this. You knew this. I, this is a crazy idea. <laughs> I knew that as soon as AJ suggested it. Anyway, it's a good trigger. Um, can I just, in my own defence, remind you that you actually said yes? Yes. <laughs> I knew. Uh, because I knew it would trigger me. I, I'm sorry, what was the lady's name who just did that telling? Monica. 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 That's really beautiful, and I don't think it's true. But, but it is true, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the emotions about AJ and our life at the moment is very true. Yeah. Um, so the emotions I've been through in the past month, and none of them have been very flowery and I haven't felt very developed at all. <laughs> I've probably been the hardest month since I met AJ. Um, so I, I expected you all to tell me about that. <laughs> Some of you did. Um, at the start of the month, uh, when we had the last session, I was going through these emotions of feeling really exposed at the groups. Like a lot of people looking at me and having expectations of me and, and me feeling very unworthy of that. And, and I'm very unworthy to be AJ's soulmate. Um, I was feeling... Uh, you can elaborate a uh, yeah, just that he was wonderful and reflecting all of this love and I had a lot of feelings about this role and that um, I didn't feel like I was the person that I am and those sorts of things and that I couldn't possibly reflect love. I was going through an emotion of feeling a lot of grief about the life that I thought I would have compared to the life that I'm now having. And it was very much keeping AJ at a distance from me emotionally in terms of love. So what Mary was feeling very much like, if she allowed herself to love me, then I would die anyway. And so then she'd feel that terrible feeling of loss that she felt in the first century. And then she lived for quite some time in the first century after my death, feeling this terrible sense of soulmate uh, love being lost and and so Mary, one of Mary's main fear has been that as soon as she loves me again, that she's going to lose me. So she's been trying to resist quite strenuously at times, uh, ever loving me at any level. So. Yeah. And I um, worked through, uh, around the same time, um, I found a huge trigger, um, myself sexually projecting at other men. And I couldn't understand, I was very shocked and ashamed about that. And um, because I felt I wanted to be with AJ, but obviously I was also keeping him at quite a distance as well. And, um, and I was going through this emotion about what about the life I thought I would have and um, what I thought I wanted my life to look like. And then through the month, I um, connected with a lot of things about feeling broken, as Helga said, um, emotionally and in my ability to love and especially love my soulmate. I felt that I, my heart had broken so much that I would never be able to love him again. I also uh, connected with the reason for the sexual projections because that was about a lot of anger I had towards AJ about um, him not being there for me as a mother in the first century and, and not, I was unable to see his true soul qualities because I was so upset at him about a lot of other things. So I was um, feeling attracted to other men who were reflecting 
in reality, far less of those qualities that AJ does, but feeling that he was not safe. And going through all of that emotion triggered massive amounts of sexual shame in me. Um, feeling dirty as a woman and um, connecting with a lot of uh, the different relationships I've had with men and the sort of mercenary way perhaps I've looked at relationships in the past for security and things like that. Uh, felt a fair bit of rage at God about having this life and having these emotions uh, and having this way that it's got to be done and felt quite alone, which is why Brian's message triggered me so much, felt all the love. And um, finally, just last week, um, I had a really major shift about shifting into truth and understanding the power of truth being in truth and wanting to know everything that's inside of my soul. Um, and I also had a major breakthrough with, with AJ and feeling that I really opened my heart to him and that I want to have my life with him and I love him very much. So it was a big week, <laughs> big month. <laughs> and many of you probably don't understand the amount of emotional processing that we do. <laughs> and. Um, and as Mary described, pretty much sort of every waking hour of our month has been something going on emotionally. Um, it's very rare for us to do anything else actually than uh, work through different emotions that we're working through at the moment. And so um, you'll have some kind of a measure of Mary, <coughs> Mary, Mary's courage uh, working your way through those kind of things. And so some of the things that you mentioned, Monica, in your channeling. Uh, Mary, of those things Mary does not yet feel about herself, but I know them to be true myself. Mm. And, um, and I know that the influence that she's going to have you know, on, on the world today is going to be a ma major influence. And, and so, um, but she feels overburdened with that a lot, don't you, and fearful about that. Um, and I find most of you other women far more impressive than me most of the time. Yeah. So she feels that most of you ladies are more impressive than she is at the moment, but, um, but uh, um, I don't know if I could agree with that, but I'm not your soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to have any comments about individuals that came up, or, or you would like to... Um... Uh, uh, James's um, channeling was really spot on for me, a lot about the frustration and, and feeling um, burdened and hopeless at times, especially the last month. So, um, Karen was really spot on. I thought about the difficulties with men and finding it really rough at the moment. Um, Jen, I thought you were glorifying me and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other Jen, I thought your second message was really good, like that I had a lot of change. And I feel a lot clearer now because I can't find you, but that's how I feel now, yeah. And just in the past week, probably a few days. Um, Liz, you were right, I thought about me feeling really unworthy and exposed, but not about the soulmate issues. So I don't know if there's anything in that for you about soulmates and stuff like that. And so, maybe so about AJ, I don't know. If yeah. you have, I think maybe you have a lot of regard for AJ and feel feel that Mary should be in love with me. <laughs> Most people do. No. I, like I think she should be, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like I can but at the start of the month, at the, the first time, yeah, the, the first time Mary's really felt love for me was yesterday, actually. Um, there's been times before then that there's been your heart slowly opening, but yesterday was the first time that I could feel from Mary that she was willing to open herself completely towards me. So um, at the moment it's like a bit of a childlike, it's a childlike feeling for us uh, at the moment to be in love. So, and that sort of come from yesterday. Yeah. So what has that taught us about mediumship, do you think? <laughs> That it's all about your soul condition. It's all about your soul condition. You see, 
it's often the emotions in you that demonstrate what you're writing down rather than the truth. And what we want to do is get to the stage where we are able to channel the truth completely as it is, whether our, whatever we're feeling. That's the goal we have in, this, in these sessions. So the beauty of working our way through this stuff is that we want to be able to change and modify our work on our soul condition in such a way that eventually we can channel things very, very, very accurately with no interruption. Does that make sense? That's really the goal of this. Yeah, so I could comment on each of your soul condition and how it's affected the channeling that you just did with both the law of attraction and, uh, and with Mary's channeling, but um, I feel that the point itself has been illustrated well enough. The key now for, you, for, for all of you um, who have been doing these exercises is to go back over what you've heard from the last channeling that was given and also from Mary herself and then try to look at every time where you didn't get that or you didn't feel that and then ask yourself why you didn't feel that because why you didn't feel that will be a, something that you are either denying in yourself or something that you are hoping is better in yourself than it really is does that make sense? so the key is for you to actually do that personal work so um, while, while I could easily go through each one's individually, obviously that's not what I want to do because in the end someone's going to miss out on that process anyway, but also because in the end there'd be quite a few of you and we'd spend the next three or four hours doing that and I'm starting to get quite tired and I still want to do the, uh, the session on which is our next homework. But what I felt was good was that by having Mary here to describe to you her emotions as in summary, it's given you an idea of the kind of things that you will be channeling when you will start really channeling about people's soul condition. Does that make sense? And it's going to mean that you're going to have to have a lot less judgment inside of yourself about soul condition and about emotions and about different types of emotions to be open enough to actually feel those emotions completely and be able to channel them. And in the end, there's this group of celestial spirits who is really, really focused at the moment on wanting each of us to get into a state where we can clearly give information to other people about their soul condition and also clearly feel our own soul condition with accuracy. So the next lesson that you'll be doing is about that. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Do you want to mention anything more? I would just like to thank all of you, actually, for doing that. Yeah, thank you everyone. I realise that's quite um, an intimidating exercise to do about someone that you potentially know. So. And that's one of the reasons, in fact, why I asked you to do it, was because you know how I feel about Mary, which has a tendency then to influence you in your channeling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so this is part of that was about uh, like triggering some issues of approval within you, issues of acceptance, issues of fear of whether you're going to be accurate or not and so forth and so forth. So the key is for you to allow yourself to notice those feelings within and start allowing yourself to deal with them at the soul level rather than just the intellectual level. And I'd like to thank Mary for her bravery too. Yeah. different, like people who are starting their mediumship have talked to me about different experiences that they've had with spirits in the past month that maybe scared them or they didn't understand or whatever and I thought maybe it would be um, helpful to them and to others to come up the front and talk to AJ about it and um, get some feedback about what's happening. Would you, would you like to do that, those ones who have had those experiences? Yeah. You don't have to. I'm looking at someone in particular. <laughs> It's okay. You don't have to. I just thought it might be helpful. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Uh, no pressure, people. Free will. Yeah, no. 
No is that okay worries. with you? No worries. Maybe another time we could do that? Yeah. That would be good. I think it might help other people as well, you know? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say as a no, person... No, Matt. Oh. Tim, Tim. Sorry. Can we... Is that right? Well, you wanted to say, Mary Ann? Just that um, as a person who wonders if they exist, that Mary, well, it's good for me to now make myself, push myself forward, that Mary didn't actually mention me while she was giving it. Ah. Ah. I thought of that, you know, and then we got it, but what I thought about you, do you want well, to I give you a step forward that I didn't just let it pass? Awesome. Yeah. 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 But the soul condition still needs to change, otherwise Mary would have automatically responded to you. So just bear that in mind. True, true. But also I think that it's really not worth talking about, so... Ah! <laughs> there it is. See, that, that's the feeling that attracted this, you see? Can you see that's the feeling that attracted this? Even with all that, I still pointed it out. Okay. But that's the feeling that attracted the response. Okay. Mary Ellen, what I picked up from your... Like it was really visual imagery that you were giving, but I felt that it was reflecting the amount of turmoil that I had in me, you know, with all this dark stuff and then light stuff coming in. That's what my last month's been like. So I thought that was, and a lot of black and darkness, which is a lot of grief I've been feeling maybe. And I was wondering if I was mixing you up with me as well. So, but it seemed, the second one seemed more positive than the first one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The second Thank one, you. probably in the last week. Ma Mary has done huge amounts of work in the last week. One thing that we probably will speak with you about at another time is Mary has gone through her life in the last week in minute detail, analysing absolutely every single relationship she's ever had with any male, including her parents, her father and so forth, right the way through every single guy she's ever kissed, every single, <laughs> you know what I mean, right the way through to now analysed everything in minute detail, looking at the emotion in every single instance. So that is a very confronting thing to do. I've had to do that myself, and many of you will need to do that yourselves to progress. And uh, one day we might speak about that when Mary feels up to that. So, um, But that that's one of the things that she's done in the like, last week. We had, we've had literally whole, well, we've had four or five days, the entire waking moment, talking about all of these different things that have happened to her in her life and that is something that is very very beneficial for you and we did it at one level and then then i suggested to mary that she's got to step down into another level and look at it from an entirely different perspective and that was very difficult for her so the perspective stops you telling the story that you want to tell yourself about yourself about all those things and really look at exactly what went on and the behavior of everyone involved yeah so what, we have, what you do first, generally, when you do that exercise, is you list all the things as you would have liked for them to appear to you to be. And then what you do is you get down into the real nitty-gritty of what actually did happen and, and what darker emotions were driving things for yourself in those situations. And it's really, really hard for you to get into the ones that are where you know you've damaged others or you know that you've done the wrong thing yourself. Very difficult to fully analyse those emotions. And my suggestion is to allow yourself to get into those because they are the ones that are going to be the ones that are the most enlightening and the most transforming for you as well. And that's what Mary was doing last week, uh, pretty much the entire, well, the last month pretty much, but uh, very, very busy doing all those things. Did I miss anyone else? Thank you. Uh, so the thing I found with doing that is that the names come up that you've forgotten about them. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. It happened to me this morning. I went, oh, I forgot that thing that happened. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And all of these really terrible events from a soul perspective that happen that we just gloss over in our lives. But when you go back through and do an inventory of your life, um, you really start seeing them in real clarity. And uh, the, key, the key is to, to be very, very clear. And what, what most people do, I find, when they do it is they do the whole thing, the inventory of their life, but they do it in a very self-complementary way. And the problem with that is that that's not the way God would do it with you. God, God is not interested in complimenting you. God's interested in telling you the exact truth of what you did in your life. So you need to start doing that yourself. You see what I'm saying? So, and the key is to allow yourself to tell yourself the exact truth, the exact motive, 
the exact reason why you did absolutely everything in your life, not the bit that you would like to believe. And when you do that, you will start getting to really core emotion and change very rapidly. And Mary's made some huge rapid changes over the last week or two doing that. Thanks everyone for your kind words. Now, Tim. Can you come down here if you want? So you can leave the mic up there. So this is more to do with the experiences with spirits that sort of bothered you a bit? Yep. Yep. Um, you need to hold it up quite close. Um, this is quite embarrassing for me because I've only sort of been watching the DVDs at home and... Um, now you're on one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I've sort of just go on trying to go back into sort of, you know, childlike thoughts that I had uh, when you were younger because I always used to find myself um, in the backyard because um, my mum was a single mother and she worked all the time so we had a huge backyard, I was always by myself and you always just find yourself running around trees and, you know, you feel like you get, that there are actually people there and, um, you know, you're speaking to God through not actual words but you have that awareness of them being there and, um, yeah, so once my life progressed, I, I slowly lost that, but sort of hearing all this is sort of reconnecting that for me. And um, yeah, so I've had a few events where um, a pop who was very close to me and sort of took me under his arm quite lovingly had um, come up quite often. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just be sitting um, on, laying on the bed reading, not thinking of anything else but what I'm going through with the book. And then I have this sudden feel of peace and calm over me and I just have this thought of my pop, mm -hmm. and the word actually comes up, pop, and I just, yeah, you feel like there's that presence there, and mm -hmm. you sort of start getting a tingling around the side of your mm -hmm. head and down there, so, um, yeah, I just pretty much opened up because I've been blocked most of my life and just said, look, I've been suppressing a lot of my issues, but hopefully with doing this, I'll actually be able to be passed, obviously, so um, I look forward to actually speaking to you quite often and mm -hmm. speaking to you again, because... He was only in my life for a short period of time, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, but it's just opened my eyes up to, to a lot of experiences and it's lots of dreams that I've been having I've just been looking a lot more deeply into and um, writing down with the law of attraction as well. I did actually type it up and I ended up getting through about a page of it, but it didn't, I didn't bring it today. You didn't bring it today, yeah. No. Yep. But um, yeah, I just found it really interesting Like when I asked my spirit guide about the law of attraction. Um, the first two lines I realised was just pretty much a definition of what I thought the law of attraction was. Um, but then once I sort of got comfortable with the fact that my pen was on the paper, a lot of words just started coming that seemed a lot more wise than what I'm capable of and mm -hmm. um, they just felt they're yeah, very nice and flowing and instructional. Um, but then as soon as, and I realised I have an issue with God now, is as soon as I started talking about God. I heard this deceit, 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 mm -hmm. and I, I stopped myself for a second. I was like, no, I'm just trying to concentrate on this. Mm -hmm. But then I started talking also about you. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one went, trust, trust, trust. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote that in brackets, and I'll, I'll come back to that later and just keep going. And Yeah, when I went back to speaking about God and that sort of stuff, I just felt this big darkness sort of overcome me and it started to get involved in actually off track to a subject more about um, individuality, being lost and all these sorts of issues. So you felt sort of like a dark, it felt almost like a dark entity yeah. connecting with you? It felt like there was two presences and one was actually with me showing but as soon as I had that thought of God it felt a whole shift um, into sort of a dark space and mm. it just felt like pretty much the lights got turned out. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. So what actually happened there, you, you understand, don't you? I think we will explain to the audience. I think you understand fairly well what happened there. And that is that for Tim, he has this emotion towards God that is, is really quite dark. So whenever he feels the word God or starts feeling about God, then it's going to attract spirits who also feel that God is deceitful and God, you know, God is bad and God's going to take away your will and, you yeah, know, you're going to lose words yourself. words became quite angry that I started writing down and yeah. quite hateful towards 
myself and actions and yeah. stuff, it became yeah, very angry. Yeah, yeah. So, so that switch means that a, now a dark spirit has attached. Yeah. And you knew that it happened as soon as you started feeling about God. Yeah. So there's the, there's the work thing to work on for yourself. So the thing to work on for yourself is to allow yourself to start expressing the anger and rage inside of yourself that you have towards God and let yourself really connect to that and then connect to the grief you have about God not protecting you, God expecting you to give yourself up. And there's a lot of those kind of things that you feel about yeah. God. And that is attracting that spirit. And what will happen is that spirit will then disconnect from you once you release that emotion inside yeah. of yourself. And it's sort of, I become afraid now to be in the dark by myself or to think about God because that feeling overcomes you all the time. But yeah. I sort of realise why I sort of have that resentment towards it. It's often I have a hatred towards women, but also I have a hatred towards men. And obviously God possesses both male and female characteristics. And yeah. that sort of realisation came over me this weekend that there's... You know, when I'm doing the spiritual work and the darkness overcomes me, I really need to pray for a longing or deal with those issues because if I don't, I am just going to be in a dark place. Yep. And if I don't get away from my male and female issues or I mean, deal with them, yep. then I'm going to be surrounded without that light. And I'm surrounded by spirits who are feeling very similarly yeah. to you. Yeah. And the truth is, I mean, you're, you are very mediumistic. So so that's going to automatically attract spirits to you yeah. and then when you ha even just feel an emotion of your own that's going to connect the spirit with your emotion straight away it is that it actually can help you a lot because yeah. inside of yourself the feeling is quite marked the difference between when you're actually clearly connecting with someone who's higher and then when you actually step when somebody else is much lower uh, in terms of their love steps with you you can feel a huge difference in that yeah, for absolutely. yourself and so you'll know oh well, what am i writing about right now that's the reason why yeah. this thing's happening and then that'll help you connect to that emotionally and, and that's the main that thing i wanted to do the mediumship because i knew it would confront a lot of my own issues but i've sort of um thought that i'd go on the track of mediumship but i'm actually sort of feeling like i want to help the ones that are around me like sometimes you'll be watching a video and then it just feels like someone's sort of circling you yeah. and it just yeah, like so you're of, feeling very much like you're going to be involved in helping the spirits move through their stuff in, in a while. Yeah, it just yeah. it felt like this one time that it just felt like someone like felt like an um, an elderly man, someone who was curious, slowly walking around me, and I was seated on a couch, and I just I was doing something, and I just had this realization that it felt like there was a presence, and I've only been doing this a short time, so I don't know whether I'm going crazy or making it up, or yeah. it actually is the feeling it is. But um, so I just start talking and start saying, well, I'm about to watch a video and, you know, if you want to come and sit and watch them, I'm quite happy for you to do that. Yes. Obviously, you're attracted to me because you have similar qualities that needs to be done out. And yeah. Sometimes I say I'm quite willing for people to join me to, you know, even to push me to get to that level because it helps everyone anyway. So yeah, yeah. Even though it's, yeah, it's quite scary at times. <coughs> so you're feeling quite frightened at times about the darker ones that come. And yeah. What, what See, I'm okay started. during the day. Like, during the day, if one came and I could actually physically see, I feel like I'd be okay, but as soon as it's dark, I just don't want to know about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's some emotion there too about the darkness and what's involved in the darkness and how you might be harmed, which is very much childlike emotion yeah. for yourself there too. Yeah, that's excellent. You're going to become a very clear medium in helping uh, spirit, uh, people, spirits in the spirit world move forward. So it's really good that you're very sensitive to them at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's half past four, um, and I've got probably if I rush through it, it will only take a half an hour. So rather than perhaps have a break now, which was I was thinking of having another break, but I don't know how your bladders are going. Um, but if we just press on another half hour, then. We can finish the session at five-ish, and that way uh, everyone goes. But if we have a break now, then it will be finishing more like half past five, four to six. So I think I just continue. I think I might be better. Right. So rather than answering any more questions, firstly, I'd like to thank all of those that came up, and uh, very much thank those who uh, went through both exercises and the before and after, and working through your emotions. But you can see how powerful it is to work through your emotions and the effect that it has on mediumship. And you can see with some of the examples given, 
how much change there was between the first message and the second message, and how much more clarity, clarity there was. And I'm needing some water for myself, so I just need to grab some. And now what I'd like to do is talk about your next homework, which is on the second page. So if you could have a look at the second page. Now the second page involves how to improve your soul condition through prayer. Now this weekend, yesterday, we talked about prayer, so many of you were here yesterday, so you understand what we need now mean by prayer, this soulful, emotional longing for God's love. And, and you have know all of the principles of what kind of prayer is going to be answered from God. So you, can, you know and maybe can revise through that. Now your soul condition is very dependent upon prayer, receiving divine love in particular. So the experiment this month is going to be about allowing yourself firstly to do some channeling or some, media, some healing type work right at the beginning of the month again, or right you know, soon after this session we have today. And then working through some development issues with regard to longing for God's love to enter your soul and actually praying every day on a regular occurrence. So this is going to involve prayer every day and then get to a place in three weeks time where you again channel another message or if you are doing some healing that you do some healing work and see what comes up in that time. But this time we're going to have a buddy system. So there's going to be a pair of mediums that get together or two people getting together channeling for each other. It doesn't mean you have to be in the same place does it? You can actually arrange oh, I'll do it with you or I'll do it with you here at the group. And, uh, and with the healing, though, you will need to be in the same place because I'm going to ask for one of you to try to do some healing on the other. All right? And then flip that over. So, the, you'll notice that the key points of uh, the soul condition is the governing or controlling force governing the accuracy and effectiveness of all your gifts. The soul condition is rapidly changed if you receive pray for and receive divine love. And just the act of praying for and receiving, uh, praying for divine love causes your soul to open and change in its state, which means that its condition is changing, even if you're not even receiving the love at that point, just the act of longing for it begins a change in your soul. And the higher truths will be transmitted more to a person who's received more divine love than one who's received less, right? And so, because the higher truths can easily pass through the soul of a person who's received more divine love. So this all being the case, what we want to do is experiment with this homework. So the homework involves pairing up, if you're a medium, pair up with another medium. If you're a healer, pair up with another healer. And then you do the pre-development exercises. Now the pre-development exercises are, if you're a medium, write a summary message from who you feel is your own spirit guide about what they feel are the most important emotions within yourself that you need to deal with in order to connect to God. Um, you might want to do about a page of it. Does that make sense? But the most important emotions that you have within yourself that are inhibiting your relationship with God. So you channel that for yourself. Right? And then your buddy, whoever that is, does the same thing for you. In other words, they channel a page of material about what their guide is telling them is your emotions that you need to do for yourself. Do you follow me? So on one hand you're getting a channeling from yourself to yourself through a gu your guide. On the other hand you're getting a channeling from your buddy through their guide to yourself. Now the reason why this is very interesting is because it, it lets you see how your own emotional condition interferes with what's really going on at the soul level. It also helps you see how your friend or buddy's filters are affecting how they view you. So it may be quite confronting at times doing this. So if you find yourself getting angry or upset because of the channeling, then what do you need to do? 
deal with your own anger <laughs> and upset in a loving way, which is focusing on yourself, not blaming the other person, and starting to really get into the underlying emotions of it. That's what you need to do. Now, if you're a healer, what I'd like you to do is for three quarters of an hour, do some, a healing session as you would normally do on your healing buddy. And then for a quarter of an hour afterwards, write down what you feel are the emotional causes for their physical problems. Does that make sense? And then you get your buddy to do that for you. And then, of course, you'll be doing that before you do your development and after you do development. So there'll be, each of you will be doing two things, if that makes sense. Now, what we want to do when we come back is have the buddies up and actually compare the different messages of the buddies at the beginning and the end and talk about a bit of the emotional influences that cause those influences. Now, the reason why I want to do this with you is because one of the most powerful assistances for your own development is your guides assisting you. But your guides cannot assist you to deal with emotions that you wish to remain totally oblivious to in your own life. You can understand that, can't you? They can only give you emotions you are desiring that you have a longing to know about in your own life. That's all they can do. They can only assist you with those. Because if they assisted you with any others, they would be breaking the law of free will. So they're there egging you on, waiting. Do you want more truth? Do you want more truth? Do you want more truth? Please tell me you want more truth because as soon as you want more truth, I'm ready to give you some more. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what they're doing with you. So they're just waiting for you to get to that stage of wanting more truth in your life, emotional, emotionally. So allow yourself to open up to that and actually by getting your buddy to tell you some things that, that you might not want to hear. Does that make sense? So in, in some of these cases it might be best to choose a buddy who's going to be really open and honest with you. Right? Rather than someone who's just going to sweet talk you. And tell you <laughs> now, what we would like to do when we come back for the debriefing is to actually go through with some of those buddies what they've actually channeled and some of the emotional influences that have been there that have prevented them from channeling the truth. <coughs> and I also want to start looking at how some of the guides feel about each one of those things. Because remember the guides are not judgmental, so they're not going to say to you, oh you naughty girl or you naughty boy, you should have done this and you should have done that. However, the guides know a lot of things about you that they're just waiting for you to be open enough to hear about. All right. And what we want to do is get ourselves beyond this point of self-judgment and into the point of being open to hear about ourselves in every possible way. Because when you get into that condition, that is when you're going to progress the most rapidly. All right? And that's when you're also going to progress the most rapidly as a medium, as well as progress the most rapidly in your own progression towards God. Now, later down the track, we'll be starting to look at your concepts and beliefs, and we'll start triggering some of those things, concepts and beliefs in with regard to the mediumship. But right at the moment, our major focus is trying to help you understand what soul condition is, and understand how you can improve it the most rapidly, if you were totally open, and also understand what your guide is there for to help you to do. Because what they want from you mostly is not to speak messages to other people or any of those things. What they want primarily is to help you become at one with God. That's their primary goal. And all of these other things will be added to you as you reach that goal. Now the other thing I'd like to say is many of you are not trusting yourself when you start these things, when you start writing. Right? And you do need to at least start trusting yourself, even if the message might be incorrect. Because if the message is incorrect, there is a law of attraction involved in that process. And it will expose some emotions in you if it's identified as being incorrect. So even, so there's, in a way, no point in judging whether a message is correct or incorrect so much at the beginning of this process. And this is what we all need to bear in mind too. Don't worry so much about getting it right. 
Now, one of the reasons why I got your channel about Mary initially was because I knew that that would challenge many of your emotions about getting it right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And feel, you feel quite challenged with that. So some of the, and now if you're going to be channeling about your friend, of course they're going to be challenged again, isn't it? This emotion of getting it right. My suggestion is try to forget all of that and just channel what you feel is coming to you. And you'll find as you go, eventually you'll connect with your guide as you trust that more and more. So even right now, if you're not connected with your guide, and you don't feel a connection with your guide, if you start just trusting things coming to you when you sit down in a quiet space, you will find that you'll start receiving things quite clearly. You might feel initially like you did, Chris, that it's all my own head, but actually many times it will be an influence of both things, the spirit guiding you to trigger what's in your head. But then later you'll find as you go, there'll be more and more of it that obviously is not in your own head. There'll be so much more of it that you have, like, I don't know anything about that. And I don't know why I channel that, so that sounds real good, eh? <laughs> you know, that's eventually where you will get to, where you will start noticing that you're actually now channeling quite clearly messages from others. When you're doing healing, the same thing applies. You will start getting to the point with your intuition that you'll just be able to put your hands over a person's, feel an emo emotional blockage in their physical form, and know exactly what the trigger emotion is that you need to talk about with that person that will trigger that blockage emotionally. And you'll be able to just scan over their body eventually and just do that for any single person that comes along. Karen, okay, thanks. With healing? No, but it's often very handy to use your hands. If I can. <laughs> the reason why is that uh, your hands have some very, are very highly sensitive to emotional changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you put your hands over a person's body, you will actually feel quite different feelings of energy coming from different points of their body. Some feelings will be feelings of heat, other feelings of cold. And if you start using your hands and allow yourself to just feel and allow your spirit guide to guide you with what you're feeling, you'll start realising that those different sensations are all related to different emotions in the person. Mm -hmm. And you'll actually start feeling where they're actually stored as well. And that will also relate to where the person is having their physical problems. So it is quite ha handy to do this hand work over a, a person's body rather than just, um, just doing some healing at their head or something like that. Is it unhealthy to talk to them? Sorry? Is it unhealthy? No, not, not at all. It's very helpful to talk to them, but, but you first need to firstly know what the emotion is that's going to trigger them to help them have that emotion flow. So when you're doing healing, the key, the key is eventually to be sensitive to all the emotion that's stored within them, in their soul, and to feel the reflected emotion that's in their body, and to be able to speak to them about the thing that they're most ready to deal with at any one particular time, and you'll find immediately you'll have an emotion and connection in your patient. So, so if you're doing some healing work, you'll find that you're about to go over. There's an issue here. It's a pretty big issue. It's ready to be done. And you'll just start talking about something that happened in their childhood because that's the intuition you're receiving. And straight away, they connect with that and you'll feel the changes in their body as they're speaking about that emotionally. So, so and, the, and you'll be able to do this at a fairly consistent level with almost any person you meet. Now... That what that means is then the spirit with you is not only like having to physically do the healing, but actually the spirit with you now is actually being assisted by the patient and yourself in the process of healing the patient. Because normally what a spirit would do on the natural love path is that he would just use your ectoplasm and your energy to heal the patient as best he is able. But their own emotions would be still stored within them, which would be creating the illness still. So that's a what's actually happening is now the energy or the motion is now flowing through them, you're now actually removing from them, assisting the removal of the cause of their problem. So, so while then, now the spirit guide with you can now easily heal the body of the effect because the cause itself is gone. And also remember I mentioned on the divine love path, if the spirit's on the divine love path, then they'll only be interested in healing the body if the person is interested in healing the cause of what they're creating. 
So you tell them that. If that's the intuition you receive, you tell them that. Tell them that. I, like, you think you want to be healed of this and you're coming to me to be healed of this, but the truth is I'm feeling this emotion from you, whatever that emotion is, and what I'm getting guidance on is that you actually do not want to deal with that emotion. So you need to perhaps go home and have a real good pray about whether you want to deal with this emotion or not, because emotion's killing you. So, you know, do you want to deal with it or not? Work, it, my personal, personal feelings are there's no point in working with a person that you know, no matter what they tell you, if you know that they are not wanting to deal with the underlying emotion, there is no point in working with that person. You are just wasting their and your time. You'd be far better off having a person come to you who knows that they want to deal with it and you can feel that they really do want to deal with it. I want to be devil's advocate, but if they really want to be healed, why do they need you? Um, very good point, yeah. <laughs> but, that, but, but see, many people initially do need to be helped to trigger that emotion in them. And that's where you come into play. Yeah. And so it, many people also do not know the relationship between emotions and healing. So, you know, um, this is where you as the... T as a medium and as a, and as a spirit healer, in the end, you really become a teacher as well. Because you're really teaching the person how to do their own healing and teaching anyone else how to connect to themselves and do their own mediumship in the end. But but that's what you're doing initially. You're just developing yourself in that way. So can they use their own hands in the same way on their bodies? Yes, you can use your own hands on your own bodies. But the unfortunate thing is that, that in terms of your own emotions, usually you're in denial of your own emotions and that is the why you're in pain. So it's going to be very difficult for you to be sensitive to where that is, aside from feeling the tightness, you know, like at the moment I'm feeling a tightness up here, which is to do with this deep grief that I'm going through at the moment. So I can feel that there, but in terms of knowing exactly what it is, that's very difficult for me at the moment because I'm not yet feeling the emotion completely. Whereas if I went to someone who was healing and they were really, really open, including open to my entire life, right, from the first century till now, then that, that person would certainly be able to help me access that emotion. The problem for me is that I've found not too many people were open to my entire life, so, so it's very difficult for me to do that, but for most people you, you can do that. But let's say you are a medium, for example, or a healer, and you've had a lot of child abuse issues in your own life, and you've not yet healed them. You are going to be very, very closed down about child abuse issues in terms of healing, right? Even if you think you're not, you are going to be. And so if a person with child abuse comes to you, you're going to treat them very, very differently than a person who has no child abuse coming to you. Right? What we need, this is why we need to be open as the healer, just as much as the medium, we need to be open emotionally. Angie, um, I don't consciously connect with the guide, even though when I'm counselling, I sometimes know things about people I shouldn't know. Yep. But, so how can I be sure that it's a divine love guide, because um, I've been psychically attacked in the past and sometimes energies have flown into me from other people. Yep. So I've got some issues with the air around who, who, I'm, who I'm channeling. Yep. That's a fair enough uh, issue. Remember that I said right at the beginning that any person, any spirit you attract is your law of attraction. So, so if it is, if you feel a negative energy come over you, the thing you've got to ask yourself is what, what Tim realised within himself. And that was with, oh right, as soon as I was writing about God, remember, he had this dark spirit come in who had these really negative thoughts about God. Right? So what was the attraction? That's Tim's dark feelings about God. And he knows now he's got to work through those feelings. Does that make sense? So, so I, I wouldn't say try to keep them away from you. What I would say is let anything happen as the law of attraction would dictate. Let anything happen, but notice it happening. So notice, am I in a rage? Am I, how long have I been in a rage? When did this rage begin? When did this anger begin? Like, because there, if there's anger that I didn't normally have and now I've got it, there's usually a spirit attachment involved with the emotion inside of me attracting that spirit. Right? So allow yourself to feel those emotions. If you allow yourself as your law of attraction to feel that emotion, to really get into it and own it, not project it at others, but actually own it inside of yourself and really work through it, that spirit attachment the next day will be gone. That's, you, you can deal with things very rapidly as long as you own the original emotion. Once that occurs, then after a while you realise there's nothing to fear. 
every one of these spirits that comes along into my life is just actually helping me deal with one of my emotions. So you might have a thousand angry spirits projecting something at you, right? And, and feel like terribly oppressed and overcome and crying and everything. Well, that's okay because that's what you need to deal with this emotion. That's the law of attraction. Remember, the law of attraction is a powerful tool to help you access emotions. So don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of your law of attraction. When you're doing this, though, do we kind of intend that a divine love spirit comes in, God comes in? Because I'm a divine love guide will come in when your heart feels like you want a divine love guide to come in. But if there are other emotions flowing in you at that moment, you'll often get other spirits. So I've had people say to me, oh, but I sat down and I wanted, I prayed to God first and then I longed for a divine love person to come and I started talking to him, I wrote all these things and then the divine love, this divine love person started wanting to have sex with me. <laughs> like, what was going on? Obviously it wasn't a divine love spirit, but, but why didn't all the other things work? Because remember, prayer comes from the true soul condition. So the true soul condition is a longing for some sexual power of some kind or some sexual interaction of some kind. Let yourself deal with that emotion. If you deal with that emotion as it's being triggered, tomorrow you won't have it. And you won't have the same attraction. So we just have to keep channeling these spirits until we Well, just allow whatever happens around you to happen. So there's been times when I've had negative, very negative spirits attached to me and I've had to work through all of that emotionally. There's been times when I've had millions of spirits trying to attack me and I've had to work through that emotionally. So allow yourself to work through each of these things emotionally. You can do your emotional work. God loves you and you, if you put your trust in God, can work through anything. Let yourself do that. And Jay, do we get to a point where we're just coming from ourself and not a channel? Yes, you will get to the point, once you become at one with God, you will get to the point where you're no longer needing to channel any spirit and all of the healing you do will be directly from God through you to a person. Right? So all what we're doing at the moment is an intermediary step to get you to that condition. So all the healing you do in the future once you get to the abundant condition will be all direct, just like the healing I did in the first century. And all the mediumship you do in the future will be direct. It will be from God straight to you to assist a person. Does that make sense? And you will not need these intermediaries, but, but you will no longer see them as intermediaries. You will now see them as friends that you want to have a chat to now and then. And, you know, so you'll now, in, the relationship will change and they'll no longer be guys, but they'll now be people that you're speaking to, your deep, your deep friends, you know. And you'll be able to talk with them and chat with them about all subjects just like you would your mate, your mate you know, your friend that you have here on earth. Exactly the same as that. So their role in your life will obviously change as you get closer and closer to God. Yep. Um, I think that question sort of helped, but for me, I'm confused as to when I should be consulting my guides or consulting God or... Your guide will say to you, consult God all the time. And if God's not <laughs> being able to answer you because of your condition, your guide will try to help you to find out what the answer is. So use both. You always consult God first. You're on the divine love path. This is all about connecting with God, not with your guides. Right? So, so do your work with God first. You, you notice all through the Paget messages, we're always saying to Ned Paget, do your stuff with God. Pray to God. Long for love. That's what's going to help us talk better. Pray to God first. Do the connection with God first. So always focus on your connection with God first. The guide connection is to help you connect to God. That's all it's there for, is to help you connect to God. It's a loving provision God has made to help you connect with her. God, the guide for me feels closer somehow? Of course, because the, your guide is like in between, like in terms of condition. God's soul condition is obviously what? Infinitely loving. Our soul condition is very limitedly loving, and our guide has some point in between. You follow me? So, so of course sometimes we're going to feel like we've got more of a rapport with our guide than with God. But what our guide is trying to help us do is to have more of a rapport with God rather than our guide. So if that becomes your focus, you'll find your progression will become more rapid. If you focus on your connection with your guide, what will eventually happen is your guide will start stepping back from you. Your guide will start feeling like you're becoming too reliant on them and they, they want you to rely on God more and they will start stepping back from you and allow 
your law of attraction to start triggering you in different ways. This is why what you will find is many of you will go through this period where beginning I, when I met you, you felt I was Jesus. Then you'll go through you know, a period of time where you're sort of really joyous about the truths that you're receiving. And then you start actually triggering your emotions. And now you start getting into the, some dark emotions. And now you start having huge amounts of doubts about who I am and what I'm saying and all those different things. That's because your guide is now stepping back from you. And because you know the truth of the law of attraction, for example. So your guide doesn't need to help you with that anymore. You need to help yourself now. So if you feel your guide stepping back from you, it's because there's something in there that I've told you over and over and over and over again, and you're still not getting it, and now you need to get it on your own. Does that make sense? And so you'll find during this process that sometimes your guides will step way back from you. You'll feel that. You'll feel like you're not having any help and assistance at times. And the reason why is because you're actually in a state where you're refusing to do some progression that they've been reminding you of over and over and over again. And now they feel the only way to help you is to feel the full actions, of, the full effects of your own actions through the law of compensation and also through the law of attraction so that you come to an awareness and want their help again. So, so bear in mind that a, that a divine love guide will often step back from you, wait for you to get in a certain condition, reconnect with you again, guide you along your way, and then you, when you start refusing again, they step back from you, wait for you to go through that particular thing. Do you know what I mean? And then do that. It's a bit like when you help a friend. If you help a friend who's needy, you'd help them a little bit along the way, but when they get too needy and they get too, and they're not really wanting to change, you would step back from them, let them go through their own problems for a bit, wouldn't you? When they realise, actually, I was needy, I need to work through that emotion, then you can help them again. Can you see? It's the same kind of action. And often the spirit on the natural love path won't do this because they're more interested in channeling things through you or doing some other things with you. And so they'll often be quite forceful. They'll force you along a road sort of thing. Whereas a, natural, a, a divine love guide won't do that with you. So understand there are going to be times in this progression where you're going to feel not very connected to your guide at all. And in fact, you're not going to feel very connected to God at all in some times, either, because there's an emotion of blockage towards God as well. Right? And God and guides, like, well, guides, if God, God is just there waiting for you because laws never change. So, so if there's no connection, there's something going on inside of you. With a guide, they'll often try to help you in that connection. But if they feel that you're being stubborn and, and they feel that you're being, you know, like resistive, they'll often step back from that connection. So I've had guys that I know in the past who have very good connections with their guides. When I first met them, they said the guy said, yeah, this guy's this is Jesus. They get a real good rush of energy, real positive thing. They go real great guns for three or four months. Then I say something to them that they feel real hurt about or whatever else. And then what happens? No, he's not Jesus. No, you know, straight away like that. And the reason why a lot of that is happening is because in the beginning, their original realisation of who it was wasn't their own realisation. It was the guide telling them who I was, but they themselves have not yet worked through the realisation. The guide will then step back. Now, here's an opportunity. You work through the realisation yourself. When are you going to come to, that, to a realisation of any of these issues? So when are you going to really believe in the law of attraction? When it becomes yours. When you really feel it. When are you going to walk through the war of cause and effect? When it becomes yours. When are you going to know divine love exists? When you receive it. It doesn't matter how many people tell you, it doesn't matter how many people show you, it doesn't matter how much your guide helps you. In the end, until you do it for yourself, you will not know. And so your guides on the not divine love path will always are focusing on, in the end, everything getting to be within you. Right? And that, that is their primary focus. And they'll do whatever they can to make that happen. Even if it means at times stepping back from you so you start taking responsibility for your own life. Very, very quick one, AJ. Um, you said pray constantly for God's love or to be in contact. I do that, but I'm sure it's in my head. How yep. do I make it into my heart? It's not going to come into your heart until you actually release emotions that prevent it from, from being a heart still keep feeling. Doing it. So still keep doing it. So with Paget, we recommend he still keep doing it. And what happens, just the, the whole object, remember, of doing it is that it opens your soul to your emotions as well and to God's love. So it actually maintains the connection to the higher realms. 
even if you have faith in it without it actually happening yet, raises your own soul condition. Faith is a thing that raises your soul condition temporarily. So it's not a permanent shift that happens in you. It's temporary until the permanent thing, which is the divine love, enters you. So continue doing it. But, it, but pray to God also. Remember, like we said yesterday in the talk that we gave yesterday was about prayer. Pray to God also about wanting to know the truth in your life. Pray to God about wanting to see the real emotions within you. Pray to, pray to God about what are my blockages to feeling your love. So start praying about the thing that you know is happening. So if many of you know that you're not receiving divine love or you don't feel you're receiving divine love, ask God about why you're not. To be shown why you're not. What's the emotion in you? And to be frank with you, the majority of you are already being shown that on a daily basis, but often we're so fixed here about something that we're not listening here and here to what's actually going on. So ask God about that. Say, obviously you're showing me every single day what I'm not doing, but I need to be more sensitive to that. Can you show me how to become more sensitive to that? Pray about those issues and really have a longing, really have a longing for that. Um, I had for a few years uh, done channeled writing and then I stopped. And this past week I've done exactly that. I was asking through God first. And then asking to show my blockages and it's because I have about three or four writings. Really quite strong, but they prefaced it by saying, you know, you've asked for the truth now. Um, and it was done so lovingly. Mm -hmm. They've pointed out to me many things that I'm still really stuck on. So it was awesome. really a change from before. And then yes. When you have a deep longing in your soul with your guides to actually channel information about what you're blocking within your own soul, your guides will respond instantly to that. And, and, but when the longing, if you think the longing is there and it's not really there, they won't respond. Does that make sense? Because they can actually feel the real truth coming from your heart. So do you know early in, this, in the discussion yesterday that I had about truth, I said to you, because we don't, can't feel people whether they really want to know truth or not, we need to get into this process of saying the truth all the time, right? But for you guys, because they're at one with God, they know whether you want the truth or not. They already know whether you want it or not. And they are going to respond completely to that desire of whether you want it or not. Nothing else. Right? And not the truth about everything else around you. It's the truth about you. That they are interested in giving you. Because that is what they're trying to help. They're trying to help you, not your partner or your father or your mother or your daughter, they're trying to help you. Yeah, well, some will be for your partner perhaps, but, but the truth is your guide is trying to help you. Always you. Would it be that they, if you say, say just give me all the trust on the everything, will they give you more than you can handle? Or will no. they only give you... Yeah. The truth is that when we say the words, give me the truth, I want to know everything, the reality is that right at that moment, that's not the truth. You, you never want to know the full truth until you're at one with God. Until then, you've got blockages to truth. Right? So the truth is that that statement even, they know, oh, well, what she means is that give her what truth she can handle right now sort of thing. You know, or what she actually wants right now. They, can, they know which bits you want right now. For the majority of us, the bits we want are the bits where everyone else has hurt us. For the majority of us, the bits we don't want is where we've hurt everyone else. So my suggestion is start focusing on the bits where you've hurt others. And take away the focus from where they've hurt you. Because more of your emotions and more of the law of compensation emotions are all surrounding where you've hurt others. They're the, ones, they're the emotions of blockage that are going to prevent you from progressing the most. It's really easy for you to see where others have hurt you generally. Right? And then, no, it's not always true, but it's generally true. But where you have hurt others, often it's much more difficult. So allow yourself to, to, to feel those emotionally. Anyway, it's about time to finish, I think. And um, I'd like to thank you for a number of things before you go. One is your donations that uh, myself and Mary have received from you, because that's helped us live uh, the last month or so. That's been re really good. It also meant that we could travel to Tassie uh, a few weeks earlier and so forth, which was really good because we had some good groups there. I would also like uh, to thank Peter and Claire for their home. That they... I 
think, it, I think it's remarkable that their whole home is at your disposal in here, yeah. as you know. And, you know, obviously, you know, imagine that happening in your house. For many of you, you would be quite challenged about that. So it shows a lovely open uh, spirit in their, on their behalf. And those who are interested in the um, development thing, uh, what should we call it? The Divine Love Sanctuary, I did. And obviously what we're going to do is just email out to everyone those who are willing to donate funds and those who are willing to loan funds. And once we've got uh, that coming back in, so Peter's going to do that this week sometime, and once uh, we've got those, fun those things coming back in, we'll know how much funds are available to actually uh, make some offers to the man. So all of that can be underway as well. Um, so I think things will happen quite rapidly, actually, based on the desire I feel from yourselves. Um, the uh, other thing is that uh, next week there'll be only Sunday at uh, Brisbane, at Brackenridge, and we'll be talking about the subject of praying for divine truth, I think it is. Um, so uh, please come along to that if you can make that. And uh, then the next month we have uh, the weekends that are available there. One of those days is a question and answer session. The reason why I've uh, said that is that many of you have a sort of a bank of questions that you've now been wanting to ask for a while. So. So my suggestion is bring along your questions for that question and answer session. I'm happy to answer questions about world change events as well if you want to know about them in that session. So uh, feel free to bring along your questions for those sessions. But I'd like to thank you so much for your time and also for your beauty that is growing very rapidly. And it's really lovely. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.